guys welcome back to my channel in today's video i wanted to give you three days worth of cleaning motivation so the first day we are actually sorting through the toy box we do a toy rotation system and it works very well but sometimes you have to stay on top of it and make sure the toys are all sorted out i actually like to categorize my tubs so we do like a sensory tub a cars tub we're doing a train tub and then we do any like miscellaneous activities like toys that make light like light and sound or um, just like toys that are stuffed and yeah things that don't really have a category Theodore tends to gravitate towards anything with wheels we do try to keep like an open mind when we are buying toys and try to purchase gender neutral stuff but he does always like gravitate towards trains and cars and I feel like if that's what your child wants then you should guide them through that process but continue like having an open mind and explaining that they are allowed to pick any toy that they want. Right now we are sorting out through the puzzles. I just wanted to make these more easily accessible and that's why I'm popping them all together and I'm going to put them in his kitchen where he can grab them whenever he wants. We actually do utilize the kitchen for a bookcase and a few other things like arts and craft and that way he can get to it when he wants to use those little toys. Um, as for our storage for like the toys, it is under our stairs and he is only allowed to go in there with parental permission. That way we like prevent him from pulling every single toy out. And I do try to bring a new tub out each week, but as you can see, that is our kitchen all organized. So I'm just going to go through and tidy up the lounge room and I also want to focus on the lounge today. I'm going to add a bit of stuffing into the lounge to make it a little bit more cushiony. Our dogs tend to sit on the top of it and flatten it. So this is a great hack that you can utilize to make it, I guess, a bit more refreshed. moving on to day two today we are focusing on the kitchen we are going to be really deep cleaning the surface areas of the kitchen i'm talking up high down low and i want to also scrub the tile grout with you guys that way we can have a nice fresh area i feel like the camera doesn't pick up the dirt and grime so well but up close you can definitely see that it's not tidy especially our sink cupboard like the cupboard under the sink it always catches a lot of like um food and i guess dirt because we utilize that area for our bins
So I'm going to use a magic eraser to clean the sink. This will give it a really nice shine. But if you don't have a magic eraser, you can use bicarb soda and a scrubber brush and it works just as well. I actually did not have bicarb on hand, but I did have a magic eraser. I'm also going to rinse that down because it does leave a residue if you don't. And I'm going to wipe it down with a dry microfiber cloth and this really gives it a nice shine and makes it look awesome shiny and new and gives your sink a new life without using any toxic harmful products. I'm also going to go ahead and wipe down the faucet. Now I know we have a few dishes in there I didn't worry about that but on another day we'll get to that area. This is just real life. I'm also going to go through and scrub our countertop stove this is a little portable stove because technically our kitchen is a kitchenette and near my legs is our oven it's actually not a microwave we we haven't used a microwave in probably three years um just for personal reasons you can definitely look into microwaves yourself but we're not gonna get into that today but yeah we use a half oven and a countertop stove and it seems to work really well i also love how you can move the stove to wherever you want sometimes if we are doing a whole big cooking session then i'll move the stove to our dining table and i'll utilize that area too i think when you have a smaller space you just have to get creative and really utilize everything every every space you have so now we're going to go ahead and wipe down all of the cupboards i'm using my diy multi-purpose cleaner this has vinegar essential oils and water and a touch of castile soap although if you don't have that on hand you can use dish soap i know that from experience the vinegar really works on like eliminating any streak marks so it's great not only for glossy cupboards but windows and mirrors and the key is to use a dry microfiber cloth and to buff it out So I also wanted to do the baseboards. I know that they can catch a lot of like food and crime, especially when you are in the kitchen all day long. I'm also going to go ahead and use the magic eraser on our, it's like silicon grout. I don't know, it's weird. It looks very white on camera, I must admit, but there were some food stains that didn't show that I wanted to get up. So I'm going to be using a little bit of elbow grease and going ahead and scrubbing that down. I'm going to be scrubbing the tile grout. To be honest, I used castile soap and a little bit of like laundry whitener, which worked okay. Um, I normally suggest to use bicarb soda. That works the best and really whitens the areas. I think I will go over this again once I get the bicarb soda. Although this did do the trick, um, it didn't give the results that I really was looking for.
Moving on to the bedroom, I did want to give our sheets and our doona cover a good wash. So I'm going to be taking that off and putting a load on. I'm also going to be changing the sheets as well and I'll pop my doona cover back on. I like to pop my doona cover on because I just like to have a made bed anyway, even though it's not technically completely made. I think it's still better than, you know, not making you bit if that makes sense Standing in the hallway I know you know what I'm about to tell you I just realized that you can't let go it's something about me and you so let me stay here a little while at least until And of course it wouldn't be a cleaning video without a basket of laundry we're gonna go through and we're gonna fold this up and then we're going to pop them away I actually don't really like folding or popping away but I do like washing the laundry let me know in the comments down below what your favorite chore is and how many times a week can you do it because I seriously do washing like 12 times a week So now moving on to dusting, I'm going to go through and dust the full house and then we're going to thoroughly vacuum, but I'm talking about all the surface areas in the bedrooms, in the lounge room, even the window seals.
Moving on to vacuuming, I'm using this Dyson cord vacuum. It works very powerfully and it picks up a lot of the dog fur. I know you can't really see it on our carpets. I feel like these are definitely better carpets than our previous rental. However, when you have dogs and a child, then you definitely have to thoroughly vacuum. I do want to get a stick vacuum for downstairs just for quick little vacuums, but I do enjoy using this vacuum. However, the cord does annoy me, but in comparison to my previous cordless vacuum, this is so much more powerful and definitely picks up a ton of dirt and fur and any type of particles that you tend to track on your carpet. So there's just a few spots on the carpet that I'm going to clean up and I'm also going to clean up those spots on the lounge. With a toddler you tend to just have food spots everywhere. Let me know in the comments if you relate but yeah if you're feeling me. I'm also going to go ahead and vacuum the lounge. This was well overdue and to be honest because we have like a salt and pepper lounge um, it does hide the dirt and stains and fur very well but hygienic reasons i like to vacuum it probably every three months
decided to have a party with some sapphire and now we have to clean the carpets. I'm using the Hoover carpet shampoo. This works really, really well and is great for when you have moments like this. As you can see on my carpet, there is some orange staining going on. So I tried to work very fast to try and get that up. And I thought we may as well do the full house since we pulled the carpet cleaner out. As for our product, we're actually using the Brightex products from Bunnings just because we already had them on hand. We do like to hire the Brightex once to twice a year as it is a commercial carpet cleaner and tends to work really, really well. But for an occasional carpet cleaner on a more regular basis, this works really well. Especially, I must admit, having carpet under our dining table does give me a bit of anxiety, but I do lay a towel down if Theodore is eating there, but I do try to encourage him to eat at his little table as it's on the tiles. I know a lot of you are probably feeling the trauma from the world right now and by deep cleaning it's a way to kind of control your environment and feel like you're on top of everything. I know for me it is a, a stress reliever and it helps ease my anxiety and that is one reason why I love making cleaning videos for you guys. So I really hope that you are finding some motivation from these and that you are, you know, coping in the world right now because it's a really tough time for everybody to be experiencing. How crazy is this? So dirty and the carpets are like fairly new. So that just goes to show We've only been in here for three months. Isn't it funny?
there's just something so fresh about cleaning your full house in a real furrow deep way I just like to pop music on open all the blinds and windows and let the most fresh air in I also had a cinnamon apple cider slow cooking on the oven so I had the best aroma going through the house and it just felt like a beautiful winter's day that was fresh and you know there's just I don't know there's just something so satisfying about deep cleaning just wanted to go through and wipe down Fedor's window seals. We actually got blinds put in this area so that made the job so much easier. We were putting blackout curtains up and down. Um, I really tried to utilize the natural light in our house. That's why he has the sheer curtains up. Um, but moving on to the bedroom, I'm going to move the bed around and I'm going to carpet clean the rug. I wanted to do the full house and that means the rugs. Aside from the jute rug because last week we had a huge mishap and I ended up tipping three liters of water onto my jute rug to try and counteract a green smoothie stain. Long story short, I made it 10 times worse and had to research for hours to try and get water stains out of jute. They do say that wine and water is the biggest jute killer and I thought we were going to have to maybe layer or hide the stain. But in the end, I ended up finding what worked best and oh my gosh, guys, talk about results. I will link that card above because I had to make a full video on it by itself and I feel like everybody needs to know this secret because I kind of just figured it out by trial and error I mean maybe some other people know but there was like near to no information on YouTube or the internet and you know it's a it's a proud I'm a I'm having a proud jute rug owner moment here because I saved it and it's just such a relief. This rug in our bedroom is pretty versatile. It's pretty easy to clean, although it does have a few staining, hence the reason why it's in our room. We just kind of hide the stains with the bed and that's okay. You can't really notice it. Your eye kind of draws to the blue speckled floor, which I hate, but you gotta do what you gotta do. You are, you are, you are, you are, you are, you are. This was just from the rug. It definitely needed a good clean.
carpets are all done, I'm just going to clean out the carpet cleaner. It has collected a lot of fluff and fur and I really hope that you enjoyed this video and found some motivation from it. If you did, give it a thumbs up and click that subscribe button and I will see you in the next one. Bye guys! I'm not a